In this problem, we're asked to solve for the variable in each of the following equations and check our answers. For a through f, we're going to be using the multiplication division property of equality. And what this property says, if I have a equals b, then a times c equals b times c, or a divided by c equals b divided by c, as long as c is not zero. So basically, it says if I start with a statement of equality, an equation, if I multiply the same quantity on both sides or divide both sides by the same quantity, then I am creating an equivalent equation, and the solution to that equivalent equation will be the same as the solution to the original. So let's see how that's going to help us, starting with part A. I have 2 times x equals 4, so 2 times what number equals 4? Well, we can pretty easily figure it out that x has to be 2. But let's see how we get there using one of these properties. I have 2 times x. I don't want to know what 2 times x is. I want to know just what x is. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I'm using the division property of equality. And I pick that because 2 divided by 2 becomes 1, 1x. One so that just leaves me with x equals 2 which is exactly the number we expected. We can check by taking that value, 2, plugging it into the original equation, 2 times 2 equals 4, so we have checked. For part b, I have y divided by 3 equals 4. So what number divided by 3 equals 4? Well, we're headed for y equals 12, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. But let's see how we get there using one of the properties that we started with. I don't want to know what y divided by 3 is. I want to know what y is. So what I can do, and let me just pull this down here so I have a little bit more room. I have y divided by 3 equals 4. So if I multiply both sides by 3 over 1, then what that's going to do, see how 3 divided by 3 really becomes 1? So 3 over 1, so that becomes 1. This is really 4 over 1 times 3 over 1. There's our 12, so y equals 12. And I can check 12 divided by 3 equals 4, so I've confirmed the check. Part C, I have negative x equals 4, or the opposite of x equals 4. Well, I can probably figure out that x is going to have to be negative 4 itself, but how does one of these properties help us? So really, when I have negative x equals 4, what I really have is negative 1x equals 4. And so if I want to look at that as getting rid of the negative 1 and making it a positive 1, I can multiply both sides by negative 1. So here's the part that I put in that's the same on both sides. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1, so that's 1x equals negative 4. So when I'm checking, what I'm asking myself is negative negative 4, does that equal 4? Negative negative is a positive, so 4 does equal 4. So our result of negative 4 checks. You can get a little bit lost in the negatives in this problem, so be sure that you understand what happened here. For part D, I have negative 4.4r equals 5.3. Well, I don't want to know what negative 4.4r is. I want to know what r is. So I can take this original equation, divide both sides by negative 4.4, and then let's use our calculator. So I have 5.3 divided by negative 4.4. And that's going to give me a decimal. And so let's put an approximate symbol here. And let's round. We weren't given any instruction in the directions, but it's usually a pretty good idea to round to at least the hundredths place. So that's going to be negative 1.20. Let's see what happens with our check. So we're going to take negative 4.4 times negative 1.20, essentially. And the question is, does that equal 5.3?
And notice that we're really, really close. If we round to the tenths place, we would indeed have 5.3. We're always going to be a little bit off potentially when we're using decimals and we're rounding because we're not able to take the full re representation of R. So just realize that when you check, you may just be a little bit off, but R approximately negative 1.20 is totally fine. Part E, I have negative 3y equals 42. I don't want to know what negative 3y is. I want to know what y is. So I'm going to use the division property of equality, divide both sides by negative 3. So if I take 42 divided by negative 3, I get negative 14. I can do a quick check. Negative 3 times negative 14, let's plug that back in our calculator, times negative 14 should give us a positive 42, and it does, so we have checked. Part F, I have negative 5 equals 5 6 x, so the x is over here on this side. Let me write this with a little bit of room here. Negative 5 equals 5, 6, x. Because what I want to do to get x by itself is I want to multiply both sides by 6 over 5. So notice that's the reciprocal of 5, 6. The 6s will cancel, the 5s will cancel, leaving me with 1. On the left-hand side, I have to do the same thing I did on the right. So I'm applying the multiplication property of equality. And this is multiplying, not subtracting. And so that negative 5, let's write that as 6 over 5 times negative 5 over 1. And that's going to equal x. So these 5s will reduce common factor of 5, leaving me with a negative 1, essentially, times 6. So negative 6 equals x. Let's do a check on that. In my calculator, I'm going to replace x with negative 6. So I'm going to take 5, 6 times, and I'm going to go ahead and just put this in parentheses because it is negative. See if that gives me negative 5 as a result. It does. So x equals negative 6 is our solution, which we have checked.